tonight is March the 6th, 2013. And I'm going to document for you tonight um, the difference that line voltage makes on harmonic distortion. I'm going to use an amplifier I built back in 1977. This is a uh, single channel of an old Macintosh MA230. Bought the transformer new from Mac back in those days. I'm running a, a pair of uh, about 1959 vintage uh, Mullards. They're made, uh, they have Daystrom printed on them. I hope you can see that. Uh, they were made for Heathkit. Made in Great Britain. This tube right here, this 12AX7, is uh, one of the uh, Bugle Boy. See, it's got the little tube playing the saxophone or whatever he's playing there. And uh, that's the 12AX7. Uh, this other one, the 12AU7, is the same thing. It doesn't quite have that. Uh, it, you can see if you look carefully, it's kind of hard to see there, but it's a Holland. It's, it's the same Bugle Boy. It's just almost worn off. Anyway, they check very good. I have very carefully and lovingly um, selected all these tubes and gone through some painstaking measurements to set this thing up. The way this thing works is really nice. This tube right here, V1, you can put your test point right there from here to ground. This is the ground. Ground here, V1 here, and adjust it to 0.5 volts with this pot. Same thing over here, V2. V2, 0.5 volts with this pot. And with this one right here, you adjust the second stage, the driver stage of the uh, 12AU7 for lowest amount of distortion. If, if you don't have, you know, the equipment to do it within, you kind of set it in the middle. But anyway, you can go through all of these uh, adjustments and uh, make it very, very nice. You will see how well it performs. It is unplugged. It's turned off at the moment. I'll show you underneath it. Uh, like I said, I built this thing quite a long time ago. Have you, uh, what I built it for was a center channel. This is, uh, I, I put a label in it. I say that it's a, uh, it meets their specs. I built it on 103077. Anyway, there it is. I like uh, homebrew equipment. I like to build it. I like to see other people's builds too. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping other people uh, will enjoy this one. Now I'm going to uh, turn it back over and set it back up and, and start measuring it at uh, 120 volts AC input, 115 and 110. I think you'll be surprised uh, the difference that it makes. Okay, our first test run is going to be at 120 volts. There it is, 119.7. I don't know if I can set it directly at 120. There it is. Well, that's pretty darn close. Okay, I'm going to be using uh, this uh, HP uh, 8903. Uh, it's, all this is operating in two. These precision 1% uh, low inductance uh, dummy loads. Only one of them, of course, because this is a mono channel. And I'll be using a Pete Millich routine right here. I'm running it from uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with 10 points per decade. Let's see what it does. Already got it set up. I think I'm running about uh, 22 watts. I'm not trying to test its maximum output. Okay, I'm gonna watch this. You see the oscilloscope's running at low frequency. There it is. There's its frequency right there. It's already off at 20. It's gonna increase slowly. You can see the uh, oscilloscope increasing in frequency. This is our voltage across 8 ohms, so you can determine the power by squaring that, dividing it by 8. This is THD. This, this reading is actually not uh, very significant because it doesn't have time to settle down, and neither do these up here flashing. But anyway, the results are occurring over here. It's up to about 500 hertz right now, that yellow line right there. I'll stop it and wait till it finishes just to keep the thing from being so long. Okay, the plot has finished and um, 
if you can see this, it starts out at just a little over 0.3% THD at 20 hertz, and it ends up just a little over 0.2% at 20 kilohertz. Phenomenally well performing amplifier, and that's at 120 volts input. Now, I'm going to change the voltage to 115. There you go, that's close as we can get. And run it again. Uh, trace 2. Let me just click on that and it starts over. We'll watch it start. You can see it start to move there. I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, now this, the only thing that has been changed is the input line voltage has been dropped to uh, 115. The yellow is the 120. This one is the 115. So it rose from just over 0.2 to about 0.45. Well, actually, there it is right there. At 20 kilohertz, it is exactly 0.45. And there's its uh, power level, 13.56 squared divided by 8. I can't uh, show you the direct readout because we're running this thing. Uh, well, we're allowing the, the computer co to control it. Okay, so last experiment here will be to lower this to 110 and we want to be careful here there we go 110 and do trace 3 okay I think I'll let it run out this time I'll show you what else I'm watching here this one's going to be the pink line It all starts out about the same down at the low end, about 0.25. So at 20 hertz, it's all very, very nice. It's interesting that it ends up, the difference ends up at the high end. You can see the pink trace is just above the other one. What we're doing, we're watching it here. You can see the frequency increasing. I like to watch it on a couple at, at, at different sweep rates because you can see different anomalies at different sweep rates. There's its frequency right there. And here it is coming across on a spectrum analyzer. I keep the glare off of it. I'm sorry about the glare. I've got to have lights in here so I can see. You can probably hear it. Okay, it's just about to end up. And here it comes. So, I guess what I'm trying to document here is just, there it is, it finished, is just a craziness that us audio people can go to. And the smallest of things, how it can change it. This is 120 volts, AC input. 115 to 110. So it went from just over 0.2 to 0.45 and now it's at 0.66. Now these are all very low numbers. This is not something you want to lose a lot of sleep over. You don't want to lose any sleep over it, but it's the kind of things that make us <sighs> crazy audio people lose sleep. So there it is. The tiniest of things can make such a difference. And uh, beautiful amplifier. I'm going to have to start, or maybe I need to get a center channel and start using this one again. I'm, I'm very pleased with this. Things always perform extremely well. Now, in the beginning, uh, if, if you look at the uh, original schematics, uh, Macintosh used uh, 70, 7591s. I just chose not to use them. I've used this uh, with, with multiple tubes. I made the uh, bias adjustment very uh, broad, so I can use 6L6s or EL34s or KT88s and done a lot of experimenting. 
<clears throat> and these uh, EL34s seem to perform very nicely. Very pleased with them. So I hope you enjoy the uh, the crazy videos and uh, and the homebrew equipment.